to I'm Not a Fan Unless I Have a Podcast. I'm John Hanford, and I am really stoked to get this thing off the ground. This is the first episode of this podcast where we just talk about all things King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard with, uh, it's just me and and one fan every episode. Um, I don't know how often I'll release these episodes, but um, I'm thinking a couple times a week. That seems right. That seems like a good way to start this off, right? Um, but yeah, we're very much feeling this out, uh, cause this is sort of, this isn't something that I was even planning on doing ever, but all of a sudden reality changes and, uh, shit's canceled. We're all antsy. We know that the band can only put out an album every so often. It's like, sorry, your smack dealer ran out. Here's some methadone to remind you of better times (laughs) to reminisce. So that's what we're doing here. We're reminiscing and looking forward to other shit that, who knows, I, I'm cautiously optimistic that it, that stuff will resume and it will happen again. But, you know, if it can't, and maybe maybe it's not the best way to start a, a podcast series off with, uh, with talking about, like, hey, maybe we're never getting our shit again. Uh, but it's something that, that you know, it's... It, it, weighs on my mind a lot, and um, I think it's better to have a contingency plan than to go out with uh, just guns ablaze and, and just thinking everything's going to work out 100%. Shit changes, reality changes. That's how we move forward, and that's how we, have you know, evolve as a species and society, and hey, as a fan base too, right? Um, so I've, I've had a couple interviews so far. Uh, I've, I've talked with a couple of Giz fans, and Both of those have gone great. These conversations are really fun. uh, And I think they're fun to listen to as well. Um, So please, if you want to be on the podcast, reach out at uh, at gizfanpod at gmail.com or on Instagram at gizfanpod. Um, The title of this podcast is way too long to make into an email address or an Instagram handle. That, That would be... Ridiculous. Even King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard has the decency to just abbreviate to King Gizzard for Instagram, you know? So that's we're, we're doing that as well uh, with, with the handles. Anyway, we're going to get right into this. Our first guest on I'm Not a Fan Unless I Have a Podcast is Tyler from Cincinnati. Uh, this dude was a lot of fun to, uh, to talk with. Super insightful real thoughtful guy and it's really cool to see just how much other people care about this band and uh and also what it means to have so many people like this in the community so without further ado here's tyler from cincinnati and myself cool so uh i guess like um you know, so you're the first guy uh, that I've had on to, to talk about Giz. So, uh, you know, congrats on being the litmus test. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, I, I think this, this, is a, this is a fun thing. And, um, you know, one of the things I was looking forward to most about uh, Red Rocks was, you know, just meeting, like, everybody else. Because, like, this seemed like sort of a um, kind of like a spiritual journey in a way, like a spiritual meetup. I am. It really. I. I cannot like I just I wish I could bottle up the emotion that I had when I first found out about that they were doing a Red Rock show because Red Rock if and of itself is like one of those once in a lifetime venues that like if you are into live music if you're into concerts gotta go see a show at Red Rocks Mm -hmm. and I've always kind of put off seeing someone there and like 
once I found out about the Berkeley shows, like, man, I don't know if I can get get all the way out to California just for a uh, concert. Then they announced the Red Rock shows right on its heels, and I just, it was just like a straight shot of serotonin and straight to my brain, and it was just, it was perfect. And I am very disappointed that, you know, it's, uh, we're supposed to be, what, 10, 10, 14 days away from seeing them? Yeah. And it just, it's such a bummer, you know? It is such a bummer. Yeah, I mean, you know, at least they rescheduled for October, but um, I don't know. It, it's with all with all the stuff that's coming out in the news. Like, I I basically had to stop following the news. <laughs> like, um, you know, I I I don't have a whole ton of confidence that October is going to happen either. But um, I don't know. It, at the very least, like, if this is bringing people, like, bringing his fans together, um, you know, just in like a, a remote means, uh, it's. You know, at least at least that's something. You know, at least it released Chucky Shrapnel. Do you see it? Yeah. Oh God, yeah. I, I mean, that was at least something to soothe my soul, just like just a little bit. Dude, w- 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 like the first scene of that, just where they're backstage, they're getting ready to go on. Like, my blood was pumping so hard, and like I was also pretty high, so like I thought I was gonna have a stroke. <laughs> like, <laughs> I I was I had polished off most of a bottle of sangria. It was fairly stoned as well, and I was just. I was just in like the right spot for it. And honestly, though, when it first started, I almost felt like I was seeing something that I shouldn't be seeing. You know, it was so intimate and just so I feel like the people who shot at PHC films, they just they seem very comfortable on stage. And that's not something you get all the time with stuff like that. No. And, and the times in the beginning, I felt like I was seeing something I, that I wasn't exactly supposed to, you know, because like when you go see a magic show, you're not supposed to see how they do it. You just see the magic. And. I just, I, I loved it. I mean, if nothing else, you know, if we don't get our concerts until October, if we don't get our Giz shows until 2021, it helped fill the void for me. Yeah. Abs- yeah, same. Um, you, you know, something something else I was thinking, like, uh, I, I don't know if you if you read the, um, uh, I, I forget which, which magazine it was, but some online publication did an interview with, um, uh, with, what was the guy's name? John Angus Stewart, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, he uh, they did an interview with him, and uh, it's really cool because, like you know, like you were saying with just how comfortable he was he was on stage, just uh, you know, like with a camera capturing everything. Like it was really cool just how that all came to fruition. Like I I, I thought it was just it was just sick how like they the guys just keep involving more and more of their friends. Uh, just bring. I, I feel like they're expanding. You know. I've um I've discussed with a couple other friends who I who I've met that are just through through being fans of King Gizzard. Um there's a King Gizzard Discord I'm I'm in and that's where I've met a bunch of people and one of the things I've talked to with about a couple of them is that I truly think that like I don't I oh so I don't know if King Giz King Gizzard will ever like break into like the full blown mainstream per se. Yeah. But I think within the right niche they're going to be legendary down the line. Like it's going to be like you saw King Gizzard in, you know, 2015 and 2016, you saw them before they blew up. And it's like, I think in, I think in the years to come, they're going to be a big deal in the right room, but I just don't know how big that room gets. Yeah. Well, you know, that's like, it's, it's funny you mentioned that. Cause like the way they're like, first of all, I think they are, they are starting to catch on um like like just in the last year they like they just did a ton of marketing to like you mm-hmm. know publicize uh infest the rat's nest and and like that was cool to see uh you know since they're still keeping everything independent um but uh they kind of remind me of the grateful dead just in that like they are you know they're starting out pretty much the same way just by being the super communal like like you know grassroots run band um and uh and like the dead didn't really like achieve uh, commercial success until like the eighties and they started yeah. in, the, in the 1960s. So it's like, that could very well be the same or a similar timeline for, uh, for King Gizzard. And well, I think another thing about it too, like another similarity, cause I'm a, I'm a pretty big deadhead myself. And I think another mm-hmm. similarity I found out is that like, how many, I mean, how many, how many bands of either, I mean, I, I don't, I guess King Gizzard to start was like technically like a small Australian, like super group of like local bands or whatever. But like, how many bands have spawned out of King Gizzard? You know, you got Pipe Eye, you got the Murlocs, um, Bull Ant. Yeah. Like, 
even like past that though, like and I, it seems at least from an outsider's perspective that like all the band members are really good about checking their egos and you know, it's not about them. It's not about who gets the spotlight. Who's it's not about who gets the time or whatever. It's about the music. And I think that resonates very well with the fans. Oh yeah. I, I, I think it's also, it has something to do just with Australian culture. Like I, I think they're like every Australian that I've ever met, um, you know, like in various places I've lived, um, they're just the coolest, like most egoless people I've ever met. Um, like, like, like if I had to make a generalization about Australians, it would just be like their lack of ego and they just don't give a shit and they love uh, just fucking with people. It's great. You know, <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, like it's such a and, you know, I mean, it's hard to make any generalization of the culture, but I mean, you're absolutely right. Like they're just they're just laid back. I mean, unless unless you're being a real asshole, like they don't care. Like, yeah. I I I, th- I think just like they're constantly checking each other, um, you know, by just with the constant banter and everything, mm-hmm. um, you know, because I mean, you know, bear in mind they came from from England uh, with, uh, you know, or just, it was just prisoners from England, and and yeah. British people are great at, t- at shit talking as well. So you got to figure the Australians are probably better at it. It's centuries uh, <laughs> of banter. Yeah, no, it's 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 awesome, um, but uh, no, it's it's cool. You're a deadhead too. Um, this is like the one thing that's uh, um, that's not really Giz related. I, maybe it sort of is. But have you ever read the book "Everything I Know About Business"? I learned from the Grateful Dead. I've heard of it, but I've never read it. Oh, dude, I'm like halfway through. It's uh, this is a I, I highly recommend this because you can see a lot of the uh, a lot of crossover between the Dead and Giz. Absolutely. Um, um, I'm yeah. planning on actually picking up Deal in the next couple of days. And uh, once I, I'll throw that on the list, I'll get get them both at the same time. Ooh, what's deal? Um, it was I got to make sure. Um, it was I can't remember which drummer. One of their drummers. Um, one of their drummers wrote a book. I'm blanking on who it was. Uh, Kreitzman. Yes, it was Bill Kreitzman. Okay, it was Billy. Yeah. No. Uh, it was Bill wrote it was Bill's book, and it's supposed to be um, again another another actually deadhead in the Discord Discord I uh, participate in. It's uh, he turned me on to it, and as I understand it, it's supposed to be this very up up front, just like laid out as it is, as it were, story of just like the Grateful Dead front to back. That's badass. Okay, yeah, I, you know what, I think my uh, I think my like one of my best friends was telling me about this a little while ago. He's, he's the biggest deadhead. And like, I've been trying to get him into King Gizzard and he's just like, you know, I I can't really get into that vibe. Like he's ultra chill. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So uh, like I, unfortunately I, I I had a misguided decision, but I sent him uh, the link to Chunky Shrapnel. I should have uh, sent him quarters, but (laughs) quarters and try Ottomans. Oh yeah. I, I sent him a, I sent him work this time uh, from Oddments. Um and also paper mache is oh, yeah. uh, is just that. That's usually the first the first album I, I give to anybody who's uh, who would maybe have to be convinced of getting into heavier stuff. But uh, um, another uh, real just real quick uh, since we're all talking about the Grateful Dead, I've yeah. been um with one thing that I've actually noticed too, from like their AMA on, they did on Reddit, the, uh, Stu, Stu McKenzie was asked if, uh, if they cared that like people were like recording their shows and stuff, like, oh, yeah. do they mind it? And I mean, I know with like the Grateful Dead, there was like the whole Owsley connection where like, it was a big, like it was a big deal to have all these shows recorded just to be able to listen to. And like, there's like people out there, like I mean, I know over in America, over over here in America, there's that Mystery Jack guy who records a bunch of sets and posts them. Yeah, I mean, at this point, man, I'm I'm listening to King Gizzard like the Grateful Dead. You know, I listen to more of their live sets and I listen to like their studio stuff. Honestly, well, yeah, I mean, I, I went through a really similar phase, um, uh, like, like like when they released the three live albums in January for the Bushfires. Um, I mean, that was just mind blowing. Um, cause like, like I was listening to these new, to, you know, these songs that I, I had never seen them play live before mm-hmm. for the first time. And like, I'd never really gotten into the vibe of those songs on the record. So for instance, uh, uh, hot water, that's one that I just never really got into 
off of uh, uh, Mind Fuzz, but when they played it live, I was like, okay, this is actually a banger. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and and actually, same thing with uh, with Mr. Beat and the uh, I think they did that in the Adelaide set. Um, but yeah, it was. Uh, uh, it, it's so weird how how just playing a song live can just totally shift well, it gives opinions. It so much more energy, and like, yeah, and I think it's kind of cool too because like I'm you I'm, I'm gonna assume you're familiar with KEXP. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I actually uh, grew up near Seattle. Oh okay, well, that's awesome, yeah. man. I okay. uh, I just I think it's really cool though because it's like within like like the smaller growing Giz community, or whatever the uh, KEXP sets are like the thing are like a thing of legend. And it, oh yeah, I think a big deal for them was when they did the microtonal one, and like they did Billabong Valley, and I think before that, Billabong was like, I think it was like a fine song. It was like a whatever. It was a good song, but it wasn't like the highlight off of flying microtonal banana. But like once that once the uh, live version came out on the um, KEXP, it was just like it just blew. I feel like its popularity within the Giz community just blew up. Yeah, no, of all the extra energy it gets live. Yeah, I, I completely see that. Um, and, and I realized just now, like, why it didn't resonate for me that much when I saw the KEXP set. And that was only because, not, not to brag, but sort of, uh, I, I saw them play it live in New, when I was living in New York uh, in, in 2018, um, like a few months before that, uh, that KEXP set came out. Um, or, wait, maybe the KEXP... You know what? Hang on. I might be getting my timeline mixed up. But in any case, I didn't see the KEXP set mm-hmm. until after I saw them live, um, which is where I saw Billabong Valley, and it just blew my mind. I just, God, man, they're just like, I mean, I, I, I tell people this all the time, and it's like, I, I love music. I, I grew up, you know, Pink Floyd was one of the first bands I cut my teeth into. Then, like, then I went to Zeppelin, and I got into some metal, some Sabbath, and I kind of got it all across the board. Man, I really do truly believe they're the best band working right now. You know, I just oh, completely. There's just no one out there like them. I just, I just, I whatever they're selling, I buy. Like I, I'm buying it. Yeah, um, and it, it's so weird because like I've never really been much of a a guy to like collect merch or you know, um, or stuff. But then just in seeing all the care that they put into the production of the shows, the fact that the shows themselves are still affordable to get into. Oh yeah. Um, I have no problem uh, allocating some extra money to, you know, support them and, and like, ha- you know, build a, a collection of sorts. Like, like I, now I've, I was incentivized to uh, get a record player uh, just cause I, you know, wanted, I wanted some of their vinyls. Like, uh, sure. you know, like I, I bought mine right. fuzz and uh um and eyes like the sky and quarters since those weren't on spotify or like mind fuzz was on spotify but it kept skipping on a few songs mm-hmm. um so i just wanted the drop cards but uh <laughs> yeah it was uh but yeah like like they act, they make you want to buy the shit which is just bananas to me because <laughs> since it's i hard, usually it's hard to do that it's very hard yeah to do that. yeah and because especially in convincing somebody as frugal as myself, like I live a pretty minimalist lifestyle. Um, and so it's weird for me to just be getting excited about buying things. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And it's just like, well, it's just, I mean, it's crazy. Cause it's like, it's not just you. It's not just me. Like look at chunky, chunky shrapnel, you know, they had 2000 of each variant put up on their website. They sold out of the one that sold out first, uh, the, copper nitrate i believe it was yeah sold out in less than like three minutes two thousand yeah two thousand records gone like sub sub three minutes that's crazy that is crazy yeah. and, and what's interesting is that like part of that is you know the uh the secondary market just trying to uh sell them for for you know like balloon prices yeah. but um but like i'm impressed with how uh with, with how like small of a problem that is like it's it's only a few people like like it's not that many Mm -hmm. i feel um because like obviously if if it had be if it were to become a huge issue then the band would probably do something to uh um uh mitigate it i guess but um but you, you know there was that one part in chunky shrapnel uh during like between the river and wawa with the uh with the girl that ran on stage and i mean cringe oh yeah holy shit that but i love that they kept that in the movie solely because 
uh, it showed everybody just how awkward and painful that is. So don't do it. Like, <laughs> like I, I feel like that had to be part of the, their mentality with, oh, yeah. with including that scene. Like if you're if you're going, there's like there's only one excuse. If, to be a, be on stage for a band that you're not playing in or you're not invited to be on, that's if you get crowd surfed up and then you jump back, turn around, and you jump back into the crowd. Right. Or, you know, like in France at, at the uh, the Paris show, there was uh, that, that little, uh, little kid friend. photographer uh, who went on, got, a, you know, gave everybody a hug in the band. Like, that's badass. Um, but it's just like, you know, have some tact. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, let's let's be real. It's different if it's like a ten year old boy or like a drunk thirty year old woman. It's a little different. Yeah. But but even the kid, like, he was he was being pretty uh um, you know, cautious and self aware, I, I thought, just like standing off to the side and then there's like, Hey no, come on. Like this is your time. Um But uh but yeah, man, uh so how how many times uh, have you seen Giz live? I've only so I've only seen them twice, unfortunately. Um it's, I saw them back at uh, in Asheville, North Carolina, at the New Belgium Brewery in 2019. Oh, that's cool. It was a real. It was a good. It was a very good set, and it was the first time I had seen them after like. So I actually I found out about King Gizzard at Bonnaroo in 2015. Uh huh. Like I was just like I don't know if you're familiar with Bonnaroo, but um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like they put up their lineups or whatever, and it's like. It's like back when they back back then they would just be this like giant like like lineup of bands and obviously like Billy Joel was the headliner that year and it was like the top bands and like I always like to start from the bottom and like work my way up and if you go back and like look at the, like the lineup poster it's a uh, I want to say it's they're like the the second line so yeah they're the second line and it's like it's actually separated with a line break to be the second and lot bottom line. So it's yeah. like King Gizzard and the break Lizard Wizard. I read it. I read, read it like Lizard Wizard, King Gizzard. I kept reading it. I was like, what's that? King Gizzard and the King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. That sounds pretty cool. So I, I pulled up the video for like hot wax on my phone. Like I we're just like we're just sitting outside of our campsite. You know, I'm sitting by our like tents or whatever. And I pulled the video for hot wax. Man, it was like instantaneous. Like it was like the hidden chord from God, whatever. It was just like that perfect thing. that just immediately, I just sunk my teeth and I was like, this is the, this is going to, I like, I looked at my buddy, Joe, my big, tall, pale friend, Joe. And I told him, I was like, dude, this is going to be the best set of the weekend. We have to go. <laughs> have to go. And, uh, and um, they, uh, I pulled it up here. They played at three o'clock in the afternoon at the other tent. And like, it was just like early set and but like even though it was early like it was still like a fairly packed crowd and like i don't know man it was just like they started playing and like i don't at that point i had only heard hot wax and cellophane because those are the two videos that are on like the youtube yeah. or whatever and i just i got into so much more like i mean they played like head on pill and they laid down all these jams so it's, it's <laughs> funny that you said hot water because i'm gonna tell you outright I did not expect Stu McKenzie to pull off a flute or, you know, whatever oh, yeah. instrument that blew my mind. I absolutely could not believe it. this wizard just pulled out a pulled out a flute out of nowhere. And it was <laughs> the most amazing moment. And like, I was sold. I like signed, like signed the deal. I'm sold. This is my favorite band. And they've been my favorite band since. Yeah. God damn. That is such a cool story, man. Like, uh, I mean, like I, I, so I got into them late 2017, like j- maybe a week after um, Polly Gondwanaland dropped. Right on. And um, and that was just another recommendation of a friend who I, you know, from college that I caught up with. Uh, like, I was just like, yeah, you know, I, I just tried mushrooms for the first time. <laughs> and uh, she was like, oh, well, you know, what kind of music are you listening to? I was like, well, yeah, I've also been getting into psychedelic music. <laughs> and uh, she was like, check out this band. So, <laughs> so I just <laughs> did it, you know, because like I was all, you know, open and accepting from the afterglow of the mushrooms <laughs> and uh yeah it's just like life was changed um like you but uh back now but yeah like i um god I, I i wish i'd gotten into them you know a few years earlier because like i would love to have seen them play like all those old old songs live because you know to actually see the the whole show develop oh yeah um and like it's cool that they still play stuff from you know 
uh, like all the way back in, in 12 bar, but um, well, like it, it's what's uh, supposed to be like the Red Rocks and like the marathon shows were supposed to be like this renaissance of like the early stuff, but they hadn't really touched a ton. That's what I'm yeah. really looking forward to is to get in some like the early oddities and stuff. Like I was yep. really excited to hear like 12 bar brews. I really, I'm I like, I cannot wait to hear some eyes like the sky. Like, oh my God, yeah. be some crazy stuff. Yeah. Well, and also like, like I would love to, uh, I mean, like 12 bars, an album that, that took a while to grow on me. Um, but like, I really want to hear them do, uh, you know, some cutthroat boogie or, uh, uh, sea of trees that, you know, th- those are, uh, two of my favorites muckraker, but, oh, yeah. um, uh, yeah, you know, but like, like the one song that I've never been able to see them play live is head on pill. Like that's my How number one. So I've, I've seen them five times. Ooh, nice man. Good yeah. You. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I saw them twice in New York uh, in 2018, once in New York uh, this year or last year, and then LA and Seattle. Um, so like I got a good assortment, but I didn't get the head on. Um, and yeah, like the, the LA and Seattle shows, they, they only played um, like, like they played off of Infest the Rat's Nest mm-hmm. to open and close it. Um, and then in New York, they did Am I in Heaven, which was cool, but, you know, it's no head on pill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was, this was supposed to be the year, you know, I, like, I don't know why I hadn't done, I've always been like, I've go, I go to a bunch of concerts with my friends and, you know, over the years, my tastes have kind of changed. I used to be very into electronic music and my friends still are. So I find myself going to like a lot of electronic shows more than I do, like just like regular rock shows, which are, which is much more my scene now. But it just kind of goes, but, like, this was, like, the year that I was, like, why am I going to see these, like, bands that, like, bands, groups, acts that, like, I don't really like? Like, why am I not going to, like, putting in the effort to go see, like, my favorite band that much? So, like, I was supposed yeah. to see them four or five times on the tour this year. And I just, that's why it just hurts to watch it. My, my, uh, my calendar just crumble away. Yep. Yeah. Calendars crumble, man. I know. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yep. I mean, um, hopefully, fall, hopefully October works out. But I mean, if October works out and it happens, I'm gonna be all over the Midwest, maybe out in California for the Greek show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, but yeah, like I, I bought tickets to all three marathon shows, and uh, and then I was planning on on getting uh, on buying tickets off of other people for Portland, and Seattle, mm-hmm. uh, since I was just gonna drive up the coast and visit my family. Um, but but uh, yeah, that obviously didn't happen. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're, I guess we're going to wrap this up pretty soon, but, um, I just wanted to like one, one thing I forgot to, to ask was, um, uh, like, like, like what, what, what's your background? Like, like how old are you? I am 26. I, uh, I work in a wood shop and I work retail. I work two jobs and that sucks. And I don't know, I'm just your general regular kind of semi hippie ish person working that nine to five. That's fucking badass, man. Yeah, it's, it seems like, I mean, you know, I, so I actually took my dad to, to the uh, the Seattle Kids show last year on his birthday. Um, and he, he, yeah, he he turned, what, 63. And um, uh, so, like, like I'm 30. Um, and it was interesting to see how many uh, young people there were there, which kind of makes sense. But, like, there were a lot of, like, old fucks. Like, it was... <laughs> It, it real, was just real recognized super diverse. real i mean the old yeah old rockers know that they're like they're carrying the torch yep yeah man um now it, it, it it's a it's a badass thing and that's cool you work in a wood shop dude um uh, it, what, what, what kind of stuff do you make um we're we get we're leased out specifically through a group of nursing homes so we do like different like i mean literally pretty much anything like there are days where I'm, I get moved from like doing wood stuff to doing like electric and plumbing and other stuff like that. But like, I don't know, so if like they need a bookcase or they need a chair or table or, you know, the beds break or whatever, they just, you know, we fix it or we fix it. We build new ones. The, I mean, the guys I work with, I'm, I'm going to like, I'm an apprentice or whatever, probably. Uh-huh. And like the guys I work with are like legitimate wizards with wood and like the things they can do with wood are like things that like, I didn't know it was possible before I started working there. And I think that's very cool. Yeah, dude. Wood- woodworking is like, th- that's a really underrated uh, 
like skill um or 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 just activity hobby or something oh, yeah. it's like it it humbles you and you just make the coolest shit like um yeah i, I have very minimal work woodworking experience but i i did manage to uh, uh build a guitar nice that's um, awesome yeah it, <laughs> thanks man um yeah I, so i got to work with uh you know basically be an apprentice to a luthier um and I, I did that for uh, uh, for a project in uh, in school. It was it was nuts. Very cool. But uh, yeah, man, I, I like I it, so I, I got a shit ton of respect for for woodworkers. <laughs> is the point of that? It's not, it's, it's it not takes a lot. Big in the world, as long as you still have all your fingers. Yeah. Oh no, that that's. I mean, you should <laughs> expect to lose like like at least half a digit. At least a, uh, you'll get at least at least one stub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> That's fun stuff. But <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> yeah, in, in, my middle or my ring finger, so I can still do the rock on. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, you know, worst case scenario, like you know, Tony Iommi, Sabbath guitarist, yeah, he uh, he chopped off his fingertips. So, uh, <laughs> and you know, he's enough of a craftsman himself. He was able to make himself artificial fingertips. Um, so, not all hope is lost. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, man. Hey, uh, I, I appreciate you coming on. Yes, sir. Hey, it was it was fun. It was different. This was the first thing I've ever done like this, but I would be remiss if I pass up a chance to talk about my favorite band. So, damn straight. And you know, you know, I think I'm probably going to release these episodes in like installments. You know, I'll probably get like a couple guests on per. So it's you know, each one's an hour, sure. and then just just sort of like uh, release them as uh, you know, sort of as, as time goes on. It, it, I think that makes it easier to consume as well. Um, I mean, heck yeah. So, yeah, man. Um, thanks for uh, for feeling this out with me. This is really fun. Yeah. Hey, looking forward to it. you. Ever need someone else to talk about King Gizzard? Send me a message. Damn straight, dude. Appreciate Have it. Have a good night, man. Yeah, you too. Take it easy, Tyler.